killer. All right, so last week was pretty crazy, you know, considering that last week, uh, I didn't really expect this because I didn't really find out until I uh, saw someone tweet it on Twitter that last week there wasn't going to be an episode of Dragon Ball Super, so there wasn't an episode of Dragon Ball Super last week, which is why you didn't see an episode review last week, and also Hurricane Irma hit Florida last week, causing a lot of damage over in Florida, obviously, just like... Harvey, uh, which is where, it's where it hit where I live, which is in Houston. So two hurricanes back to back and two consecutive weeks and all that. It was pretty awful. And then also we didn't get an episode of Super last week. So not having that was pretty awful. But anyways, we, let's hop into a Dragon Ball Super episode 107 titled Revenge F, A Cutting Trap is Set. And this episode uh, went into it. It was titled Revenge F. I thought it had something to do with Frieza, considering we haven't seen him since early the early beginning of the whole arc, but it, it actually didn't have anything to do with Frieza, it actually had mainly to do with Frost. The second half of this episode, or rather the rest of the episode after the whole beginning part of it happens, uh, actually has to do with Frost, and the, ep the episode actually starts off with Frost having a little flashback moment uh, with him talking to Champa, and he's basically asking Champa to... Uh, forgive him for, you know, for all the you know kind of dumb crap that he did in the last tournament and basically he was trying to convince Champa that I if I eliminate universe 7 you know can you forgive me and Champa was like yeah whatever just do that whatever you know so they kind of established a little deal in the beginning of the episode for episode 107 uh, very interesting, and of course that all ties in for uh, Frost's revenge, of course, against Universe 7. Uh, mainly Vegeta, but he also goes after Roshi, which we will talk about a little bit later. But anyways, Frost is trying to get his revenge in the episode. Uh, for, of course, the first up, uh, beginning of the episode, it was shot pretty good. Uh, it kind of seemed like it had like more evil, uh, like shadowy, like... Like, like yeah, shadowy, like evil immersion in, in the beginning part of the episode. But of course, after that, we actually get uh, a couple of action scenes of um, you know the pride troopers, and we actually you find out that there are 36 warriors left total in this tournament, and they actually note out that there are f four fighters in Universe Four, but only two of them are visible to the human naked eye. Which, you know, if you followed up in all of the spoilers that came out in the recent weeks, you know that two of them are kind of like referenced to be kind of like this. I'm not going to go into what the spoilers are. If you want to, you know, find out what these spoilers are, what these characters pretty much are, uh, of course you can go check out Geekdom's channel or just any other Dragon Ball YouTubers channels that actually talk about spoilers on a consistent basis. Me, I uh, prefer not to really talk about spoilers, only when I, you know, kind of really want to. So the beginning, uh, after this, the beginning rest of the episode is basically uh, Maji Kaio, which we did see a couple weeks back. He goes after Jiren because Universe 4 wanted to see more of what, what the hell Jiren was, you know, all about. You know, he didn't really show off too much of a too much of a presence even though you know everyone pretty much knew that he was very very strong so Maji Kaio goes after Jiren uh, and then Dispo actually gets in the way of Maji Kaio and starts attacking Maji Kaio. Uh, Dispo hits Maji Kaio with uh, just his kick uh, kind of really just you know incinerating this guy he's basically just like torn up the shreds but of course we we know what Maji Kaio is basically consistent of like his body matter which uh, is basically liquid metal and really quick, I want to say that I don't know if that was just me personally, but it he kind of Maji Kaio kind of sounded like Naruto from from Shippuden mainly, and also Boruto. Uh, I don't know if that was just me, but he almost sounded very very similar to Naruto. I don't know why. Maybe that's just because I recently watched the Boruto episode, so maybe kind of like his voice is like in my head almost. It makes me sound kind of psychotic, but whatever. So. Uh, Topo is eventually about to go and help Dispo, but Jiren's like, nah, bro, I got this. So basically, Jiren walks up to Maji Kaio and one punches him. He basically just one punched him, man. 
<laughs> that was a bad pun. But no, Jiren just without even really flexing all of his fucking bodies, uh, body movements and shit, he just basically, you know, throws out a punch, not even really hitting him. He just, you know, eliminates Maji Kaio. Uh, Maji Kaio actually, you know, created with his liquid uh, body matter, he created like a gigantic arm and was actually planning on attacking Jiren with it, but of course Jiren, you know, one punched Maji Kaio out of the arena, which honestly upsetted me. I was kind of disappointed because I wanted to see a little bit more Maji Kaio, hopefully, but no, didn't happen. It's kind of whatever. So we get the conflict later on uh, that I was just talking about. Frost goes after Master Roshi, uh, mainly because in order to extract revenge on Universe 7, I guess he's going on whoever's the weakest at the moment. So uh, right now he's going after Master Roshi because Master Roshi just, you know, a couple weeks ago got just got done fighting for his, you know, his goddamn life. So, Ma uh, not Maji Kai, I'm sorry, Master Roshi and Frost start attacking each other. Uh, Frost is proving that he's far more powerful than Roshi, so Roshi decides to use the Mafuba, and he misses. He actually misses Frost to seal him in a jar so he can knock him out of the arena, but Roshi missed, you know, and that ends up uh, serving more of a purpose of um, why they made him miss, uh, essentially, but... You know, Roshi's getting rocked, you know, he's just getting rocked. Frost kind of tries to get the attention of Vegeta, which is, you know, I guess Frost's main, uh, you know, attention point at. So Vegeta comes in, saves Master Roshi, uh, you know, throws Frost a, a mean right hook. Vegeta's like, I'm not, I wasn't trying to save you, whatever. And I was like, oh, well, thanks for doing it anyways. You know, you still saved them even though you didn't mean to so whatever uh rest of the episode is a is a tag team of uh Magetta and frost uh you know two warriors from universe six they're going after vegeta and you know the big weakness for a uh, weakness for Magetta is that Magetta doesn't like to be name called she doesn't like being insulted uh Magetta, for whatever reason somehow has his ears covered up uh i know why but you know, I didn't, I didn't really expect that he'd be able to do something like that. Vegeta throws a big bang attack at Maketa. Maketa nullifies the attack with his hand, and so Roshi's there. He's kind of like behind Maketa. Uh, he realizes that he can't fight Maketa with just raw strength, so he, so he starts using the Mafuba. Tries to steal Maketa. Frost jumps in front of the of the Mafuba, uh, reflects it back. Is and then he starts to tease that he's gonna throw it back at Master Roshi. But in fact, because Vegeta is trying to go after Frost, Vegeta starts going after Frost. Frost turns around and throws it at Vegeta and successfully seals Vegeta in the jar with the reverse Mafuba. And honestly, really surprised me. I wasn't expecting Vegeta to get trapped like he did. It just doesn't seem like that would be something that would happen to Vegeta. But Vegeta got trapped in the Mafuba, the reverse Mafuba, and then eventually got sealed in the jar. And I thought that was pretty much it for Vegeta. I thought Frost was going to take the jar and then just throw it, not even, you know, trying to, like, boast about it or whatever, getting his revenge or whatever. But, no, Frost, because he's similar to Frieza, starts, starts to boast. He starts thanking Master Roshi for the evil containment wave attack, saying that it's very powerful, of course, as we all know. And also, if you didn't get the reference of the reverse Mafuba, uh, Piccolo Jr. back in... Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball, and Piccolo Jr. is the current Piccolo that we know, of course. He actually uses the reverse Mafuba against Kami and the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. So, it was a very interesting moment. There are a couple of, you know, hints the Dragon Ball that some people may notice, some people may not notice. Maybe they're not really, like, hints and references to Dragon Ball, per se, but the reverse Mafuba is definitely a reference to it. So, Master Roshi actually, with the last bit of his strength, throws like a tiny be uh, piece of key energy towards Frost, of course it misses. Frost is getting ready to basically chuck the, the fucking jar off of the arena. Uh, of course, Master Oshi isn't going to allow that to happen, so he deflects it back towards the jar, shatters it. Of course, Vegeta then gets released out of the jar. Vegeta is then shown in Super Saiyan Blue. He's pissed. He's so pissed off that this actually happened so mad so he actually shatters um the thing that's actually covering Maketa's ears throws it insult to him and then you know 
Megetz is basically just then there, defenseless, crying because he got insulted. Uh, Vegeta is about to go after Frost. Frost is like, no, nope, you're not getting me now. I'm gonna go ahead and leave. So he throw he, he fucking vanished out from the area by throwing a key blast at the ground, creating smoke, whatever. So Megetza gets eliminated. Frost is still around until then. Uh, Vegeta is then telling Master Roshi that this is about time for him to retire. All this crap. I was like. Initially, I, di I didn't really think that much of uh, I didn't think that much of it. I thought it was just kind of like, oh, whatever, retire from the tournament because he almost died a pretty good handful of times. You know, it's that's understandable, but no, nah, it's just kind of like you know, whatever. Time for you to you know throw yourself off, go eat a sensu bean before you die. Leave the rest of this crap to me. So Master Roshi falls off of the arena. Uh, willingly, of course, uh, is then given the Senzu Bean, and we actually get a little bit of interaction from Beerus to Master Ochi, which I actually really liked, and Beerus is basically saying, my opinion of you has changed, Roshi, and all this crap, and I was like, yes, it's about time, Roshi, someone like Roshi, you know, got recognition from a god. It was pretty cool, but... Some people are saying, like, they didn't really like how Vegeta was the one to, you know, tell Roshi that he needed to retire, or whatever. I, I I didn't really think that was that big of a deal. I didn't really see a problem with Vegeta being the one to tell him, or just like the whole ending of the episode whatsoever. Uh, but you know, it's kind of whatever. I didn't really see too much of too much too much of a big problem for it. If you want to know, uh, kind of like the big thing that people are talking about at the, the at the end of this episode, go and check out Geekton's video. He actually explains why he didn't really like that Vegeta was the one telling Master Roshi to retire. Uh, you know, it's kind of like whatever. So, the end of the episode is actually hinting towards uh, Rebrianne going after Goku. So, it seems like those two are going to be fighting in the next episode. Or at least it's hinted that way. Uh, I, I hear that the next episode, or next week's episode, is going to be very action-packed. So, hopefully, there's a lot of excitement. I'm very excited. Dragon Ball Super is you know just insane it's been insane since the first episode for me because you know new dragon ball content is new dragon ball content even though the first two arcs were retelling the movies but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here uh the whole episode it was a it was pretty good if i would have to rate it uh from one to five it's like definitely like four out of five definitely i would give it a four out of five uh i, I will say that there was uh, two soundtracks that I don't ever really really remember hearing. Uh, I don't know if other people have noticed that or if they have used it before, but it was pretty good. I I don't remember ever hearing these soundtracks before. I can't really tell you uh, where they are in the episode that that I heard them, but I don't know if they're new. I don't know if they've been used before. But personally, I haven't really paid too much attention to Dragon Ball's music, uh, mainly because I haven't really been doing that recently. But now I'm starting to you know do that more often the more i watch anime and it's, it's it was really good so i really liked it anyways i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here if you guys enjoyed i'm running out of breath if you guys enjoyed drop a drop a like if you're new to the channel subscribe for more content just like this hope you guys are having a fantastic day i'm stuttering i'm gonna end the episode the video what am i even saying <laughs> whatever peace out guys hope you guys are having a good day i'm Stalling, whatever, bye. <laughs>